You know, the Bible really is an interesting book. There are stories in the Bible that convict us, and there are stories in the Bible that confound us. There are characters in the Bible that are exemplary, and there are characters in the Bible that are sort of quirky. There are passages in the Bible that lighten and inspire us, and then there are passages in the Bible that astonish us. And then there are the oddities of the Bible. And our central character in our text this morning is an oddity, Matthias. As I said, it's a few days after the ascension of Jesus. Peter, the other ten apostles, Mary the mother of Jesus, Jesus' brothers and the women who've been following Jesus all gather in the upper room for prayer, praying about what is to come. And then Peter gathers the other disciples, about 120 access, in order for them to vote on who it is that will follow Judas. And Judas, as you know, betrayed himself and betrayed Jesus and then killed himself. And so they nominate two. They nominate Justice and Matthias, the 120 Nominate to Justice and Matthias. And then they all pray. Pray for the Spirit to discern which of these should be the 13th apostle. After prayer, they cast lots, and Matthias is chosen. Matthias becomes the 13th apostle. Never to be heard from again. Not a word. Not an afterthought. Not a hint. Zilch. I mean, he is chosen as the 13th apostle, and you would think that would bring something, but there's nothing. He's the man never heard from again. But I'm here to tell you this morning that Matthias has a legacy. That even though we don't hear from him again, believe it or not, He's left us a legacy. Let me show you some things. Small things done for God matter. Small things done for God matter. Now keep in mind that Peter says that one of the preconditions of being nominated to be the 13th apostle is that you must have been with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry through his resurrection to his ascension. In other words, you had to have been with Jesus every moment of his active ministry in order to be even nominated. That means that Matthias walked that dusty, those dusty paths and roadways of Palestine with Jesus. That means he heard every word Jesus spoke that wasn't spoken in private. It means he witnessed most of the miracles that Jesus performed. It meant that he was a part of the collective gathering that went wherever Jesus went. Matthias, though unknown to us, was known to Jesus and known to those who followed Jesus. And he would have had some responsibility. He would have had something that he was to do for Jesus and something he was to do for those who went with Jesus. For if you were a follower, if you were a disciple, if you were part of that larger group that went with Jesus from place to place, walking those dusty paths, you had some responsibility, however small it might be. You don't have to serve on a major committee of this church in order to make a difference. You don't have to be one of the primary elected leaders of this church to make a difference. You don't have to have a notable front and center, center stage kind of volunteer role to make a difference in this church or anywhere. Little things matter. You know that John Wesley was the founder of Methodism, and John Wesley once said that that one of his favorite readings was the practice of the presence of God, which was written in the latter part of the 17th century. The practice of the presence of God, if you don't know, was a compilation of conversations written after the death of Brother Lawrence. Conversations with Brother Lawrence. Now you say, who was Brother Lawrence? Well, Brother Lawrence was a man who volunteered at a monastery outside of Paris, France, uh, in the latter part of his life in the 17th century. He became known as the saint of the pots and pans because as a volunteer, he was assigned to the kitchen. And so Brother Lawrence spent all of his ministry cleaning the floors, sweeping the floors, 
helping cook, cleaning up after the, the meals, and washing the dishes. That was his role. And Brother Lawrence is quoted as saying this, it is not needful that we should have great things to do. We can do little things for God. I like that. It is not needful that we have great things to do. We can do little things for God. Like Matthias, each of us can find some little thing to do for God and the kingdom. Secondly, we can honor our commitments. We can keep our promises. Again, if Matthias was even going to be denominated, because they could have nominated any number of people, the 120 that were gathered there with Peter. They could have nominated any number of people, but they nominated two, Justice and Matthias. That means that those who nominated them to be the 13th apostle believed this was a man who would keep his promises. They believed that when he had followed Jesus, he had kept his commitments. They believed that the responsibilities that had been given him or that he had taken on were fulfilled. They believed that it was worth nominating because he had kept his promises to do what he said he would do for Jesus. I want to recommend another book to you. It's a poignant, heart-rending book called A Promise Kept. It was written in 1998 by Robertson McQuilkin. And it's a part of the story of the life of Robertson and Muriel McQuilkin. They were married in 1948, life going great, six children. And then when she was 55 years of age, he writes, this happened. We were visiting friends in Florida the summer of 1978 when Muriel, my wife, started to repeat the same story she had told us five minutes earlier. I reminded her that the story was a rerun. She just laughed and continued. Funny, I thought to myself, that's never happened before. But it happened again, and again, and again. She was 55 years old. Three years later, when she was hospitalized to check out her heart, a young doctor called me to one side and said, you may need to think about the possibility of Alzheimer's. And sadly, surely enough, Muriel was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And sadly, but surely, the disease took its horrific toll, as that horrendous disease does. In 1990, Robertson decided that he needed to retire earlier than he expected, and so he retired as president of Columbia Bible College and Seminary, and he retired telling the administration, the faculty, and the students these things. This decision was made in a way 42 years ago when I promised to care for Muriel in sickness and in health till death us do part. So as a man of my word, as a man of integrity, I'm keeping the promise that I made. And it's a fair promise because she has cared for me fully and sacrificially all of these years. And if I cared for her for the next 40 years, I would not be out of her debt. In 1990, he retires as president of Columbia Bible College and Seminary, and he says, I made a promise when we walked down to the altar of that church. I made a promise that I would love her and be with her in the good times and the bad times. I would be there. In 1995, Muriel spoke her last audible words. And by that time, didn't really recognize Robertson. And she died in 2003. Now, I would never say, nor would Robertson say, that families that have to deal with that horrific disease always are going to handle it that way. Please hear me. Alzheimer's is a very difficult disease with very complex decisions that have to be made by family. But I am sharing with you a promise a man kept. 
He said, I made a promise. And I'm going to keep that promise. What about your promises? What about my promises? Are we keeping our promises? Are you keeping your promises to God? Are you keeping your promises to the church? We received a new member this morning at 8.30. We will receive another new member at 11 o'clock, and we will ask them this question. Do you promise to serve Christ faithfully through this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And everybody who joins this church says what? Yes. Are you keeping the promises you've made. Matthias kept his promise. And thirdly, there are simple but significant ways to serve right here in this church. In working on this sermon, I ask our lead staff to share with me some of the places that right now we need volunteers here at Germantown Church. Lisa Pierce, our new children's director, is launching, as you know, a uh, a, a sort of a makeover, I guess you'd call it. That's my term, by the way, not hers. A makeover of our children's ministry and launching some new things. And, and she said, tell them I need some men. I need male mentors in the children's ministry. And she said, if you want an unseen, quiet, I'm not sure about that. I, I got quiet down here. I'm not sure that's the right thing for children's ministry. But if you want to serve behind the scenes, and make a difference, come down to Grace Place. Or do you know that on Monday nights, there are visitors from this congregation, volunteers within this congregation, that go visit every person who comes to this church as a first-time visitor and leaves us their contact information. So if you're a first-time visitor on Sunday morning and you sign that registration pad, we have volunteers that go out to the homes of every one of those persons and carry them a batch of cookies but more importantly, the warmth of this church. Evangelism could use those volunteers. Did you know that on Sunday afternoons, after we've celebrated the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, Beverly Rhodes reminds us, there are volunteers who take communion. See that bag? who take communion to our homebound members so that those who cannot be here as a part of our faith community on Sunday morning receive the same sacrament in their faith community that you and I receive. Because some people volunteer to go out on Sunday afternoons to anywhere between one and three homes to the homebound and take the sacrament of the Lord Jesus Christ. On August the 13th, we're going to launch Caldwell Guthrie for this school year. It's going to be a training event, and you know about Caldwell Guthrie. It's one of the most significant ministries in this community, the wider community, where volunteers spend perhaps a minimum of an hour a week helping second graders learn how to read more effectively, grow in their self-esteem, have their education enhanced, all because people in this church over 60 a week give of their time and their talent. Maybe the list I just gave you is not your thing. Listen to me. There's a niche. There's a place. There's a need. There's an opportunity that you can serve simply but significantly Christ through this church. I hope you'll pray about that. Where would Christ have you that you're not already? Well, you just think about it. I mean, you get elected to be the 13th apostle and not a word. How would you like your legacy to be that they elected you and nobody ever heard from you or about you again? But I'm here to tell you that Matthias left an important legacy. He reminds us that little things done for the kingdom matter. He challenges us to keep our promises, our commitments. And he shows us that simple but significant things
can help the church and honor the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.